Hello guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today uh, we are decluttering my eyeshadow palettes. I currently have just over 120 to 130 eyeshadow palettes. So that's a lot. <laughs> I will say eyeshadow is like my favorite makeup thing to do and I love palettes. I've been sent palettes. I buy palettes. I love palettes a lot. So uh, what I really want to do is do my declutter in a different way. If you've seen any of my past declutters, I always declutter like wherever I store my palettes. Either it's on the actual palette bookshelf or within my Alex drawers. But today I brought all the palettes that I'm decluttering. I did exclude anything that I've bought in the last three months. If I bought a palette in the last three months, it's not going to show here. But I brought the rest of the palettes on top of my desk so that we can actually sit here, look at each one, and decide which ones do I actually, well, not need, because technically I don't need all of these, I just want them, <laughs> but decide which, where, like, where do I actually have overlap? What can I really, like, realistically declutter? And also just to see, I have 120 palettes right here. That's a lot. <laughs> anyway, so before we jump in, I do want to give you a quick look at how um, these were organized before I brought them all out onto my vanity. So let's jump to that. Okay, so as far as eyeshadow palette storage, I have a couple that I keep up here on display. And honestly, I'm not going to be decluttering these. Um, this one's also an eyeshadow palette, but I just like having it here is kind of like a little Ouija board. So that one's going to stay. I have the whole eyeshadow palette bookshelf. Palettes all the way down. And then I moved it over here. I have two drawers down here with palettes. So this is the first one. I'm trying to make this a little bit more organized. And this is the bottom one. So that's what we got to work with. We've got two of the Alex drawers. We have the eyeshadow palette bookshelf. And then whatever may, I might add more for display. We'll see. So as you can see, we have the eyeshadow palette bookshelf, which I actually want to clear off one of the shelves on top because I want to make more room for decor. With Halloween coming up and with spooky season coming up, there's going to be more Halloween decorations for sale and I'm probably going to buy a lot of spooky shit. And I, want, I really want to redo my background once I buy some more stuff and I kind of want to have the top shelf open just for decoration. So we would have two shelves on the eyeshadow palette bookshelf for eyeshadow palette storage and then we have the two Alex stores. And I really want to be smarter about how I store these so that when I shop my stash, I'm actually like seeing everything that I have and I pull out things just more evenly. Because I can look at, the, like looking at this pile, I know there are palettes in here I haven't used for at least a year. In this kind of hodgepodge, there's a little bit of a method to the madness. I tried to organize it by brand for the most part, but then I also tried to do like like palettes with like. So if there is like a similar palette, I would hopefully see it next to another similar palette, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so I think honestly the easiest way to jump in is with what I have right in front of me. So let me make a little bit of room here. Scoot, scoot, scoot. And you can't see it, but there's palettes like out the edges here. I just have to zoom in so we could at least try to see something. I have two palettes from Pure and honestly I love them both. This is the Soiree Diaries, which I, I have really trouble pronouncing that word. It's just really difficult for me, but I love this. It's such a great neutral palette, so I do want to keep this. The other Pure palette I have is the Pure Defense. I believe I got this in a Tri Beauty box and it's just such a pretty like smoky palette. The shades are buttery, they blend out amazing, so I do want to keep both of my Pure palettes. Next I have Colourpop right in front of me. So I've got uh, four of their nine pan color palettes. I have the Blow and Smoke, which I'm actually going to keep this to the side because I have a couple of smoky palettes that I want to compare this to because I don't need as many smoky palettes as I have because I really, really like this one. And I just realized this shade is popping out. Huh. Are they supposed to pop out? Are they mag- they are magnetic. Ah. Huh. I think that's just broken though. Anyway, um, but I really like the Smoky palette and I want to keep it. So I'm going to just put this to the side so I can compare it because I know there's some other palettes here. The Blue Moon, I really like. It's really pretty blue shades. I want to keep this. The Just My Luck is a really pretty green palette. But I have, I think I have other green palettes that I like better. So again, I think I'm going to keep this to the side so I can compare it to some green palettes that are coming up. 
the orange you glad i really do want to keep i love orange and this is just such a pretty and fun orange palette so we're gonna keep this one all right this i'm gonna keep for sentimental reasons this is color pop's very first palette this is the yes please palette and i just feel like i have to keep it like it's like i'm holding a piece of makeup history here <laughs> Next, my, I think my newest and my last ColourPop purchase was the Sailor Moon collection. And this is the eyeshadow palette. It's pretty cute. Uh, do I reach for it that often? No. So, I don't know. You know, maybe next year might be the year I pan something from ColourPop for my Pan That palette. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> um, last but not least for ColourPop, my favorite palette. This is the Good Sport palette. I absolutely adore this palette. Like... Bury me with this palette, please. I love it. It's fall. It's the shades are beautiful. The formula is uh, spectacular. And this this is one of my favorite palettes ever keeping it. Okay, not really going in any order, just whatever's next to my hand. Um, I have some Charlotte Tilbury quads here. And to be honest, I was not a fan. The green one I can make work. So I think I'm going to keep this green one, which is in the shade uh, The Rebel. So I'll keep that one. But this one I hated. This is the Walk of No Shame. I am going to clean this up and sell this because <laughs> I, I just, I need to recoup some money from this. I was not a fan, I did not like it. Okay, and speaking of Smoky, this was the Smoky palette I wanted to compare it to. This is the Huda Beauty Smoky Obsessions palette. I talked about this in my eyeshadow palettes I've fallen out of love with video not too long ago and I really wanted to just compare it to the ColourPop Smoky palette, which is a cool toned Smoky palette. Yeah, you see that? I definitely am reaching more for like these cool tones and I just like the ColourPop shades better than this. So again, this is one I'm probably going to clean up and sell on my Poshmark. I'll have that link down there in the description box if you're interested in anything that I'm interested in decluttering and selling. I think I'm going to keep these other two um, Huda Beauty palettes. This is the Mauve Obsessions. It's just a really, really pretty mauve palette. I haven't reached for it that often, but I feel like I really do need to bring this out because it is a stunning palette. Um, and then the Nude Light palette, I really like. It's beautiful. It It's really easy to get a quick look out of this, and it's one of my favorite nude palettes. So we'll keep those two. Next, I picked this up because I saw it in store, and I thought it could be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury palette. This is from Flower Beauty, and honestly, like it wasn't a dupe like I thought it would be for the Charlotte Tilbury, but it is a pretty palette, and I think the next brand that I want to do like a full brand review on is going to be Flower Beauty. So I kind of want to hold on to this until I can do that full Flower Beauty review video, because I had a lot of fun doing my last full brand review, which was the Pixie one, which unfortunately, there was a lot of misses there, but I had fun doing all that research, buying the products, and doing all of that. So I'm going to do it again, but for Flower Beauty. So if you have any suggestions for products that you like from Flower Beauty, let me know down below. Speaking of Pixie, we've got some Pixie palettes, and to be honest, I didn't like any of these, so I'm going to declutter them. I got this uh, Rose Bronze Glitter Quad. That's going to go away. This is actually the palette I liked the most. This is Hazelnut Haze, but I know I'm not going to be reaching for this, and I'm not a fan of the Pixie formula, so I'm going to declutter that. I'm also going to declutter this one. This one was the biggest disappointment because I absolutely loved the color story. I saw pictures. I saw video. I was dying to get my hands on this. And then I finally got it and it was trash. <laughs> I was so sad. Um, so I'm decluttering this. This is the Natural Beauty palette from Pixie. All right, let's move from what's right in front of us. This Unfiltered by UKMA palette. I don't get as much use out of it, but I need to. I actually um, backed the Kickstarter or was it the GoFundMe? I, I backed something to get this created and it is a really pretty palette. I like the tones. I like the way it's laid out because it is pretty unique in its like layout and I do like it and like these you can use as like face powders as well. So actually that might be idea. Maybe I should put this with my face palettes instead of eyeshadow palettes. But anyway, um, I am going to keep this because I do want to start getting some more use out of it. And it's the first and only palette I've, I've ever backed in like a Kickstarter or something like that. Let's get this big bad boy out of the way. This is the big Wet n Wild 40 palette. And I have to say, it is kind of big. It is kind of annoying, but um, I really like the palette. Also, the packaging, it's hard to clean. Like this, it's never going to look clean. Um, but I really do like this palette. Uh, and I do want to keep it. So we're going to hold on to this, despite it, it just know that it's huge. <laughs> All right, Draclan Hill Morphe palette. Unfortunately, this is a great palette. I love this palette. I hate how much I love it, but I do. I really like it. Um, so she's she gonna stay. She's like the last Morphe thing I think I will ever actually like really like. 
All right, these two Shop Missé palettes, they're not my favorites. This is the Color My World Big Eyeshadow Palette, and this is the Moonstone Big Eyeshadow Palette. I'm really not a fan of their big eyeshadow palettes. Um, I kind of want to keep them around just until I do my next Shop Missé eyeshadow review because they did just come out with some brand new trios and quads. I actually have all of those palettes in my everyday makeup basket. And I want to do a review video and I also want to compare the formula of those to the formula of these. So I'm going to keep them until then but to be 100% like frank, once that video is done I'm probably going to declutter both of these. So really this isn't so much as that I'm keeping it, this is more of a, a declutter for later, <laughs> if, if you will. All right, these I absolutely love and I'm going to keep all of them. Uh, this is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac Love Signs palette. It's not my favorite out of the three, but it is a really good palette, and I just, I just love the big Zodiac palette from BH. They made those smaller Zodiacs. I'm not a huge fan, but these big ones are awesome. The Crystal Zodiac is pretty good. This is the newest one. Look at how pretty that is. I love that. And then the OG and my absolute favorite, the original Zodiac palette. Honestly, this is one of the best palettes. I think I own. I absolutely adore this palette. I love the tones. I love that it's grungy. I love that it's earthy. The baked shadow formula is one of the best eyeshadow formulas I've ever used. It's just amazing. I love this palette so much. The only downside is kind of the big bulky packaging. If this had been like in a regular size kind of like palette like this, I don't think I would stop using it <laughs> to be frank. Next, a uh, makeup brand that I fell in love with as soon as I saw it, and I have not bought more. I need to do another haul from them because they've come out with more palettes since. This was Makeup A Murder's very first eyeshadow palette, and this is the eyeshadow palette number one trace evidence palette, and it's just really pretty. <laughs> and I love the whole aesthetic. As someone whose family has a lot of homicide detectives and police officers and who actually went to college or criminal justice and worked with cadavers, this brand has a special place in my heart. All right, <laughs> I love this. And uh, this might go on display in the new background. All right, next, this was a gift from my good friend Bougie Brie. She gave me the Sephora Pro Cool palette. And I have to say, this is a stunning palette. This is beautiful. I love the um, idea of these Pro palettes from Sephora. I wanted this back when they first came out, but it was a little steep for me at the time. I think it, I think these are 60-ish dollars each. Um, so I was really grateful that my friend Brie was willing to send this over to me. And every time I've used this, I've gotten a look that I love. And I love bringing this out to use with other palettes too. So I am gonna hold on to this. All right, I kinda wanna go here to free up some elbow room. <laughs> All right, um, this is Sugar Pills. I don't think it's their first palette, um, but this is a Sugar Pill palette. This is my first Sugar Pill palette, and it's really, really pretty. Um, for pastels, I've got this palette, and then where's the Kylie? Right here. I have the Kylie palette. So those are my pastels. I really don't think I need any other pastel shades. Pretty much covered here. Oh, I think the Kylie shades are popping out of their palette too. Oh no. So anyway, I like both of these palettes and I think I'm going to store them together. Let's move to some drugstore products. So I've got these City Mini palettes from Maybelline and I've got some Wet n Wild palettes. And then I also have some e.l.f. up here at the top. So let's make some elbow room. There we go. Okay. Let's start with the row down here. Um, this is a collab palette. I actually had this in a product pan a while ago and I hit pan and I realized I had not touched this palette since I hit pan and I just wasn't inspired by it anymore. So I'm gonna declutter this one. All right, next, let's take a look at these City Minis because while these were really great palettes for Maybelline, I cannot remember the last time I used any of these. And honestly, I have to say, I like the Wet n Wild formula more than I like the Maybelline. So I think I'm finally going to buy the bullet and just declutter these. And I think I'll probably just sanitize these and sell them in like a cheap little bundle on Poshmark. All right. In the other direction, the Wet n Wild palettes, these are two new palettes. I believe they're repackaging these palettes into this new packaging. Um, and there's two more in this line that I want to pick up. 
Um, so I'm going to keep these because they're literally brand new and I want to do a video eventually <laughs> on them. And then uh, these are just my favorite palettes they've come out with in the last couple of years. So this is the Boo Crew palette. This was a Halloween palette a year or two ago and it has the best drugstore black eyeshadow I have ever seen in my life. And you can't really find this palette anymore which is very sad. So I'm going to keep this. And then this is Stop Playing Safe. I believe this is supposed to be a dupe for a Natasha Denona The Tropic palette, I believe. Um, but I just, I love these shimmers in specific. Like this shimmer right here, I pull out specifically to use that shade. Um, but in general, these shades are also just buttery and beautiful. And I really like the Wet n Wild, certain Wet n Wild formulas. I have to admit, um, these are pretty hit or miss. This Halloween collection had four palettes and only one was really, really good. And then this one, I believe there were two or three other palettes, but they duped palettes that I already had in my collection and I didn't need an extra dupe, so I just kept this one. Um, so that's actually why I wanted to keep these around and do the video so I could show you guys exactly which Wet n Wild palettes are worth it because unfortunately they are pretty hit or miss. But the good ones are so good, they're amazing. Moving on to the e.l.f. palettes. Okay, so I have the Mad for Matte 2 palette and the Rose Gold Sunset palette. And they look pretty similar. This one just has shimmers because of course this is a matte palette. Um, I think I'm going to declutter the Rose Gold Sunset. I just haven't really been reaching for it or wanting to use it at all, but I still think of and reach for and want to use the Mad for Matte palette. So I'm going to declutter this one and we're going to keep this one. All right, next I have two Midas Cosmetics quads. These are from the Coffee Collection. This is the Green Tea Macchiato palette, which is beautiful. And then we have the Pumpkin Spice Latte, which this is the best pumpkin spice anything that's been makeup themed that I've seen. It's, it's, it gave me pumpkin spice. It smashed me in the face with a pumpkin and I said, thank you. It's amazing. I love this palette so much. It's one of my favorites. And I can't wait to wear sweaters and drink my fucking pumpkin spice latte and wear orange all over my face. It's gonna be a great time. <sighs> okay, we got some Kylie palettes. Um, this is the, what are you? The Blue Honey. The Blue Honey palette. Um, I really like this palette. Surprisingly, like I like the colors. I like the way this palette is laid out. Um, I really love this shade right here in the middle. It's beautiful. So yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this one. Um, and this one is the Halloween palette from a couple years ago. And it's oh, beautiful. And it's pretty unique too. Like I'm kind of surprised that this is a Kylie palette, right? Because it, it looks unique. Actually, this one should probably also go on display in my background, but I wanna keep these two. Next, we have another Midas palette. This is the Lemonade palette. It's giving me the best yellows, great yellows. I think this is my only now, my only full yellow palette. So I'm gonna keep this. All right, this one I'm pretty on the fence about. This is from Pretty Vulgar and this is the Nightingale eyeshadow palette. I had wanted this for so long and then I thought it was too expensive and then I couldn't find the brand anymore. I found this by chance in a like TJ Maxx and it was on sale. I'm gonna put this on the chopping block. I am going to make a point to actually reach out and use this palette. And if the looks I make with this palette don't just wow me, I'll declutter it. So yeah, this is this is going to be uh, one of my last chance palettes. Uh, next, we have a custom MAC palette that I actually made with my boyfriend, Alvin. Uh, we didn't get as many greens as we wanted because the MAC that I went to at the time, this was years ago, the MAC that I went to, a lot of their single green shadows were sold out, so we just had to use what they had to make a palette. I had a lot of fun, and this palette is really sentimental to me. I was actually, I just had a thought about what if I made this my next pan that palette, because it's green, it's sentimental, um, and it's MAC. I haven't really worked with MAC shade, like shadows a whole lot, so I think that'd be actually kind of fun. Um, but this is very sentimental to me, and I do want to keep it. Okay, Buxom. This is a gift from my friend Bougie Brie, and it is a very, very pretty neutral palette, so I'm going to keep this. And then, again, a, friend, a gift from my friend Brie. This is from Ciate London, and this is a beautiful, just like soft, not really pastel, but like soft pink palette, and I love it. Okay, another gift from my friend Brie. This is from Love Lux Beauty, and it's just a beautiful green palette because you know I love my green, so I'm gonna keep this one. All right, and I think... All right, so I've got this palette from... Where are you from? Maybe. And this is the Take Me to Santorini palette, which is beautiful. And then I have the Nomad 
palette. This is the uh, Lake Como eyeshadow palette. That is a stunning palette. That is beautiful. Um, and then these are all greens. Yeah, uh, I do like these, so I'm gonna keep both of these. Uh, this Tarte palette, it was a gift from my friend Brie. I don't actually, I really like the way that it's laid out. You got the nice big blush in the middle, some neutrals over here, and like some purple mauves over here. Really pretty. I feel like maybe I should put this in my face palettes and not in my eyeshadow palettes, and that way I would actually reach for it more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep it and just put it with my face palettes. Speaking of Tarte, uh, another gift is the Spicy Bitch palette, which I have to say, uh, seeing it in person is actually pretty cute. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep it. I have this BH Cosmetics Avocado Toast Palette, which I had to get because I'm a good millennial and I love avocado toast and I love green eyeshadow, which I have to say, it's not as green as I thought it would be, but this is still a really good palette and I actually like it. So I'm gonna keep this. And while technically this isn't a palette, I treat it like one. This was the Davina and Angelica Neekfist collab palette and it's beautiful. I love these shades. I keep them in here like a palette, so I'm considering it a palette and not just single shades, but it's beautiful. I love the color like combination. It's so unique. It's so creative. I love this. All right, this is actually, I think, my only Urban Decay palette. I have the Naked 2 palette, which is old as sin. Mm, I actually almost also panned this one, but like a lot of the shades did fall out the last time I used this. Oh, but I really do want to pan this. How cool would it be to pan this after years of having it? Mm, that'd be so okay I'm gonna keep it uh this is sentimental and I'm debating like I'm this is around the time of the year where I start thinking about what palette I want to pan for next year like last year I, I think I had picked the Leela palette I had the idea in my head by like September and I confirmed it in November so I knew I was going to be panning it um and I'm thinking about this one because I always just glue those pans back in right um and I think it'd be fun to pan a naked palette it'd be I think it'd be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it. Next, uh, I've got this Elf and Chipotle palette, which surprised me with how much I liked it. This this is an amazing palette. I love this palette, so I'm gonna keep this. Now my Too Faced palettes. I believe this is all of my Too Faced palettes. I'm doing a quick check, I believe. Oh, I lied. This is the other Urban Decay palette that I have. I just saw it. This is the Elements palette. This is a really pretty palette. This was their holiday palette a couple of years ago. Um, and I do want to keep this. It is just kind of a pain in the ass to store because it's round. But I'll get over it. Anyway, so back to these Too Faced palettes. Um, I have to keep the Sweet Peach palette because I love this palette. And I've actually hit pan in it without meaning to. I have pan here and I have pan here. Um, again, a palette I thought about panning, but I love this so much. I don't want to pan it and get rid of it. So I'm going to keep you um, a palette I think I can just part ways with because I don't reach for it and I just don't appreciate it that much anymore. This is the Chocolate Gold palette. And I think I can clean this up and sell it very cheaply to someone who's going to get a lot more use out of it than I am. And then this Chocolate Bonbons palette. Again, this is a palette I wanted for so long but couldn't get my hands on and I found it at TJ Maxx. Um, so let me put it in that last chance pile with the other palette. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to have the chopping block palettes into one side, like in a basket. And then if in a few weeks or maybe a month, I'll come back and do a video dedicated to those palettes and whether or not I'm using them and if I'm going to keep them or declutter them. So keep your eyes out for that video and make sure if you haven't already, you subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever that video does come out or in the rest of my videos, which come out every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right. Next pile of palettes over here. First, we have the Kindness Vegan Dinner <laughs> Anniversary Palette, which I saw someone on Twitter call KVD. Instead of Kendo Vegan and Kind Vegan Beauty Palette, someone called it Kendo or Kind Vegan Dinner. A Kindness Vegan Dinner, and I cracked up. Like, I was legitimately laughing out loud. So now I will be calling it Kindness Vegan Dinner. Um, <laughs> but I really like the palette, and I want to use this. Again, this would also be fun to pan. Anyway, um, I do want to keep this palette. Uh, a few gifts from my friend Bougie Brie. These um, Lorac palettes are beautiful. I love these. So they're kind of like mini face palettes, which again, I feel like I should move these into my face palette drawer because there's a lot less stuff in there and I feel like I'll get more use out of these if I put them in my face palettes. So I'm going to put these two with my face palettes. 
Um, and then this Vizzy Art palette was a gift from Bougie Brie as well, and it's beautiful. It's very pretty. Um, I haven't been able to use it too much, though. So I do want to keep it. I really do like it. Do -do, another cute couple of palettes. Oh, all the ones down here were gifts from Brie. So let's go through those. Like a good 90s kid, I, of course, love a good vibrant neon. These shades are beautiful. I think this is so cute with the 90s packaging. So we're going to keep this one. This uh, Scorpio palette is stunning. I just cannot wait for holiday. I just imagine like a smoky red holiday eye with some black lipstick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be great. Okay, keeping this one. Oh, I love the Jouer palette. This is the Ultra Foil. Um, this is a beautiful set of toppers. And I specifically brought this palette out a lot to use. Um, and they're beautiful, I love them. Okay, so we're gonna keep that one. And then this one uh, from Gourmand Girls. I have to admit, this is very similar to the Makeup a Murder palette, and I don't reach for this one as often, so I think I'm going to declutter this one. Okay, we have some Lunatic Cosmetic Labs palettes. I have these two, this heart one. I freaking love this palette. This is beautiful. Look at this, and it's got a little mirror on the back. I'm keeping this for sure. I also have their Descendant palette, which is shaped like a coffin. This is a beautiful, beautiful neutrals palette. Look at that. I love the way this is laid out too. That is just stunning. And then it has a nice mirror. Haha, uh -huh, looks like a butt. Keeping this. And then from Lunatic Cosmetic Lamps, I have the Elvira palette, which is a work of art. This is just my aesthetic to a T, and I'm gonna keep it. Okay, this palette from, actually this was a birthday gift from my good friend Brooke. And I have to admit, I have not reached for these shades that often. So I think I am going to declutter this one. And then here, this was a palette I think I got in a Try Beauty box. Um, and it's beautiful. Like, look at these neon shades. That's beautiful. Um, packaging is a little bulky, but I can deal with it. I like this. All right, real quick, let's go through my Melt palettes and my Lorac palettes because I don't think I'm going to declutter any of these. I have the Smoke Sessions palette, which was on the chopping block, which I think I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my list of Last Chance palettes because unfortunately, A, this palette is very fragile. You can see some of these are broken. And all this does is sit in my eyeshadow palette bookshelf. It really doesn't do much. Um, so I'm going to put that with the other Last Chance palettes and use it and see how I feel about it in a few weeks. Um, but I really do love both of these. I've got the Millennial Pinks palette, which is so pretty and unique. And then uh, this was the gift from my friend Brie. This is the 27 palette, and that is just very, very pretty. For Lorac, I have the original Lorac's 1, 2, and 3 Pro palettes. I never picked up the 4 because the 4 was kind of the same color story you see in a lot of other palettes. But I love all of these. I feel like these are pretty underrated for how great the formula is and how awesome these palettes are. Like, they're, there's a good amount of shades in here. The formula is spectacular. The packaging is nice. You get a nice big mirror with it. And it's thin and it's sturdy. I really think these are so underrated. I love these palettes. And I have to keep them. All right, a palette that I just have not used and I'm not a huge fan of and I wanted to clutter. Uh, this is the Rustic Glam from Domini Cosmetics. It just wasn't what I was expecting and I don't reach for it. So that's probably gonna get sold on my Poshmark. This Glam Light palette is just so cute. I love it so much. This is the Viva Taco palette and it's just it's so cute. <laughs> I like the shades. So um, again, kind of a pain in the butt to store because of the shape, but I like this and I wanna keep it. All right, another Midas palette that I really like. This is the Flower Bomb palette, and it's beautiful. I really like this palette, so I'm gonna hold on to it. Palette I think I'm ready to part ways with because I just don't reach for it, and it's kind of big. Um, this is from La Roc Pro, L-A-R-O-C, as opposed to Loroc, L-O-R-O-C. Um, and this is from a Tri Beauty box, and it's pretty good, but like I just, I'm not reaching for it. I have a lot of palettes here, and I think someone else can get a lot of good use out of this. So I'm going to clean that up and sell it on my Poshmark. Next, we have these three palettes. I have the Bad Habit, which is a brand that no longer exists. This is the Retro Love, which was a dupe for the Subculture palette. I did pan the Subculture palette back in 2019, um, and I love the palette <laughs> to death. So um, I like having this around. So whenever I do feel nostalgic or I miss those shades, I can use this instead of buying another Subculture, which I've 
gotten pretty close to doing, but I don't really want to rebuy a palette that I've already panned. Um, so I like having this around. This Kylie palette, this is the peach extended palette and it's my favorite peach palette. I love these peach shades so much. I actually did a whole video comparing this to the ColourPop peach palette. I'll throw it up on the cards and this one, spoiler alert, it won. Um, so I'm gonna keep this. Next we have the Suva Beauty palette. This is the Rose Period palette. And I mean, they're pretty light pinks, but uh, again, I am not reaching for this. So I'm gonna clutter this. All right, it's finally time to do it. I've been saying I'm going to test these out for a video for like over a year now and I just haven't. Like this one still has the packaging on it. I haven't even removed like the tape from this one yet. This, these can go. These are both from Profusion. This is the Wanderlust palette and this is the Tempest palette. They're gonna go. Yay. All right, next I have some Ace Beauté palettes. Um, one of them I bought the Oceanic palette and then the other two were gifts from Brie. Um, the Oceanic palette is just beautiful. I love these blues and greens. The Grandiose palette is stunning, really pretty. And I feel like it's got like the shades from that Rose period palette with a few extras. Also, I'm getting like modern Renaissance vibes from this. So keeping that one. And then the Vintage Dawn palette, which I think is my favorite. Look at how, this is fall. This is fall in a palette. I love this. I, I, I'm going to do an updated favorite fall palettes video this fall, so make sure you subscribe for that. Um, and this is going to be one of them because it's beautiful. This one. Ha ha ha. I talked about this in my I Should Have Palettes I Fall in Love With video. And to be frank, I kind of just want to keep this for frankening because these are really good shadows if you want to mix and franken things with. And I do, like, I'm specifically thinking I want to franken this black shade with a shade in my pen and palette right now, the Lila palette. So uh, I'm going to put this with the Last Chance palettes. Um, I'm probably going to use it to franken when I do franken my Lila and maybe some other palettes. But really what I want to do is just cut off the mirror and have this as a cute compact because it would just be like his face and then the mirror on the back. I think that'd be really cute. And actually I would use it more than I would use the palette. Next, I have a palette from Milani that I love. This is the Bold Obsessions palette, and this is such a great, like, neutral palette. You can get a really great smoky eye here, warm neutral eye in the middle, and then, like, a nice kind of neutral brown look on the end, and it's stunning. This is beautiful. All right, a palette that I think I'm going to let go. This is from LA Girl, and I just didn't like the formula of these. They didn't really work for me, so I'm going to declutter this one. Shall we go through my Natasha's? <laughs> I have three Natasha minis. I have the mini retro, mini gold, mini love. I'm gonna keep those. I also have this five pan palette, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I've kept it because A, you can franken these, and B, having the palette itself, you can actually like pop shades out from other palettes and make your own five pans, which I actually wanna start doing but I need to take the time to actually like pop the shades out and label each one of them, which I know is gonna take a long time, so I'm procrastinating on that. But that's really the only reason I'm keeping this five pan palette. Next, I have the Sunset palette that is very sentimental to me. I could just wax poetic about this palette. It took me months to save up for and finally buy, and it was my first Natasha palette, and again, very sentimental. A newer palette that I absolutely adore. This is the Circle Local palette. I freaking love this. I have not rearranged it yet. I do want to rearrange it. So I need to get on that, but it's so pretty. Next we have the Metropolis palette, which another favorite. I love this palette. It's, it's my grungy dreams in one palette. And last and least, the big 28 green brown palette, which is probably my biggest makeup regret. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't want to declutter it because I'm petty. That's why. And I spent a lot of money on this. And I have some pan in here, but I want more pan. So yeah. And again, I can probably frank in some of these too. I have two Pat McGrath palettes and I'm going to keep the Divine Rose 2. I actually just did a video reviewing this palette and eh, I feel kind of mad about it. Um, I do like it better than the Holiday palette though. So I'm going to keep this one. And we are going to declutter this holiday palette because like I can tell the difference in these shades like just how they feel how they apply yeah so I'm gonna declutter this probably gonna sell this on my posh marks so I can clean that up nicely and someone else will nice will probably appreciate like a much discounted Pat McGrath palette
palette. Okay, I have a few um, Violet Voss palettes. These are all gifts from my friend Bougie Brie. We have the Macron, which is just so pretty. Look at that. And I love the size of these palettes. Like, I feel like they're not too small, they're not too big. Um, I've got the Limeade palette, which look at those neon shades, yeah. Um, and then the Holy Grail mini fun size Holy Grail palette, which is very, very pretty. I like this like size of palette, so I'm gonna keep these. All right, I have all of my uh, ABH palettes here, and I gotta be honest, I'm not gonna declutter any of these because I like them. <laughs> I have the Soft Glam palette, which is just beautiful. I have the Riviera palette, which is a beautiful summer palette. I have the Sultry palette, which is beautiful. Like specifically, like the shimmers in here are like to die for. They're, they're gorgeous. Next we have the Alyssa Edwards palette. Then we have the original Norvina palette. Beautiful. I'm currently testing this against the new ABH, the big actual Norvina Pro palette. Um, I was sent that in PR and I'm currently testing it out. So keeping this one. And then this is from Alter Ego, which I believe they're still around. Um, this is the Temptress palette, which I believe Yes. Is it sultry it was supposed to dupe? Yeah, so it's a dupe for sultry. It's actually a really good dupe. Do I need to keep it though? I did get it in PR and I did a video about it and it was a really good dupe. I did like it. But do I need two of the same palette is the question. I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep the actual ABH sultry and then I'm gonna declutter the Tetris palette. Oh my god, and we're almost done. All we have left are my Juvia's Place palettes, which I know I have not been reaching for these, and I know I don't need all of these. So, let's let's do some decluttering. The Tribe palette. I have not loved this. Let me open up all of these, see what we're working with. All right, we got this one, we got this one. That's, hmm. Ooh, I like that one better. All right, these are all my Juvia's Place palettes. Right off the bat, this one looks very similar to the Make Up A Murder palette, so I am going to declutter this one. I really like the Deuce. This palette right here, I feel like it's unique, it's pretty, I like this one, so we're gonna keep this one. The Warrior Two. I've got those shades and they're all matte, uh, I'll declutter that one. And then out of these, I really like this one better than this one. So let's declutter the Tribe palette, which, wow, I'm surprising myself there. Um, and we're gonna keep the Nomad. And then this, I did use this as part of my blush when I finished my Pen That Palette for 2020. And to be honest, I have not reached for any of these shades since. So I don't, I'm not gonna sell it because there's a whole shade missing. I feel like that wouldn't really be worth it for somebody, but I'm gonna declutter this. I'll see if one of my cousins wants it. Oh my god, we did it! Oh my god, so I tried to put all the palettes that we kept in one shot, but they're not gonna fit. Of course, it's still a lot of palettes, but I'm really proud of what we decluttered. Oh, I can't even show this all. This is everything we've decluttered. And I will say most of this will probably go for sale up on my Poshmark closet. So I'm hoping by the time this video goes up, if not fairly soon, um, the ones that are fit for sale will be listed there. So that is it for this declutter and this 2021 declutter series. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below what you thought of these declutters and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.